Open your cerebral cortex and shift your lobes into upper beta phase because you are going to have Bitcoin knowledge transmitted directly into your vestibulocochlear. Your host at Bitcoin Knowledge is Trace Mayer, an early Bitcoin advocate since it cost a quarter, but this is not intended to be investment advice. A doctor of jurisprudence, but this is definitely not legal advice. And an investor in core cryptocurrency infrastructure, including Armory, BitPay, Kraken, and Mitagio, but this is not a recommendation of those services. Here, you get fed via direct mind download with pure and free Bitcoin knowledge. Welcome back to the Bitcoin Knowledge Podcast. We have a tremendous interview today with Matthias Abari, the CEO and co-founder of Satoshi Tango. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Well, first, like, what what is Satoshi Tango and where do you operate? Well, we are based in Buenos Aires, Argentina. We have a, we are a Bitcoin uh, platform. We have two different platforms, one that serves Argentine customers. We offer the possibility to buy and sell Bitcoin with Argentine pesos. We have a merchant service to allow merchants to accept Bitcoin as a payment. You can pay your utility bills with Bitcoin, more than 2,500 utility bills around Argentina. And we have a money transfer service between Argentina and Mexico with a partnership with Volavit. And that allows you to send and receive money from to and from Mexico using Bitcoin on the back end without the user even noticing. We also have an international platform where you can buy and sell Bitcoin in USD. We have local means of payment around Latin America, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Uruguay. And we have a Visa debit card, a virtual debit card and a plastic debit card that we can send to more than 100 countries. And it's a, a debit card in USD that you can fund through our platform using Bitcoin. We have many customers around the world. How did you get involved in Bitcoin? Like, what what led you into this magic well, it, money? It's a it's a funny story. I was traveling through Indonesia two and a half years ago, and I read about the Silk Road. It was like a, a huge story on, on the media. As you know, the Silk Road uses Bitcoin, and so I started to read about this digital coin. What is this? What is a Bitcoin? So I'm an engineer. So I love math. I love cryptography. I don't know much about cryptography. I mean, I'm not a technical person, but so I started to to read about Bitcoin, and and then you know my mind exploded. I mean, I I understood that it was this amazing technology that allow us to to transfer value over the internet without any cost and in seconds. So when I came back from that trip, I was working with my current partner, the CTO of the, of the company. And I told him, do you know about Bitcoin? Have you heard about this? No, what is that? And so we started to trade. We started to buy and sell, you know. Uh, we didn't know any website. It was the time with empty Gox. And you're trading in Argentina? Yes. Oh, wow. So we started, I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not a trader, but I started to buy and sell, you know, to, to play it a little bit. How did it work in those early days? I mean, was there a community down there? <clears throat> yeah, there was a, well, a small community. Well, it's... It's a huge community right now. I mean, it was one of the of the biggest communities around the world. Uh, but at the moment, we were like in our own world. Like, just we didn't know about the rest of the community. We didn't know the guys from the Bitcoin uh, ONG in Argentina. And so we we were working on a project on an e-commerce website, and that did go so well. So we said, okay, well, why don't we, we launch a website to buy and sell Bitcoin, you know, easily, not trading, but you know, fixed price. Yeah. And then we started to, to, well, my partner started to code. And after six months, we have the, the MVP and we launch. And then we realized there was a huge community in Argentina. We didn't even know. And <laughs> what you guys needed down there. <laughs> well, it, it was crazy because, you know, we had the website online because we were testing it. And some of the guys from the, there's a Facebook group, very well-known Bitcoin Argentina. And some of the guys says, hey, does anyone know this website, Satoshi Tango? is like... We don't know him, and if we don't know him, it doesn't exist. We don't trust them. <laughs> yeah. Who are these guys that uh, we don't know them? They are not part of the community. And that was the, the, the way we, we, we knew the whole community. And well, a week after that, we launched, and it's been a ride. 
it's been uh, almost a year and a half now and it's it's business is, is going well. Doing how well. how like what problems are there in Argentina that you're solving with Bitcoin? Like why why is it valuable to people down there? Well, there's a combination of, of, of things in Argentina. We have lots of talented people. We have a free university, so many people go to university. We have lots of developers working for, for companies from abroad. And we are used to getting things, getting around things, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's part of our culture because it's been like this. We are, we, every 10 to 15 years, more 10 than 15, we have a crisis. <laughs> You're going to have another one. <laughs> yeah, well, we now we're having one. Yeah. Yes, we, we, we missed it. Like, 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 yeah, okay, again, the crisis. Yeah, oh, <laughs> where were you? <laughs> we get to go out in the streets and bang pots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Caserolas. And so this combination of, of things that we are so used to work things around and, and because we had capital controls, it was a huge use case. And so, well... People is uh, sending money abroad. People is receiving salaries because they are freelancers. Uh, we have very good designers, very good developers. Many people working uh, from abroad. Sapo have uh, the, has their their offices in mm-hmm. Argentina. Uh, Bitpay has one office in Argentina. No, we got two. We got one in Buenos. Bitpay has got one in Buenos Aires, and I think one in Tucumán. Yes, well, they have because Mati- yeah. Matias is up there with another developer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They have five developers there in two months. They 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 go to copay, and so we are this crazy country that goes from crisis from one crisis to another. But then we have lots of talent, and I think it's a powerful combination. And we have a free university, and it's one of, one of the best in Latin America. So we have very you know talented people that know how to program, and it's. Two or three things that made this uh, made Argentina a huge Bitcoin community. It's crazy because we're a small country, you know, four million people. We're, we're nothing, but it's uh, so. So you're saying that it helps protect or avoid the currency crisis and the currency controls, and uh, helps commerce happen internationally with like freelancers and developers and like the young kids at the university. I mean, is that is that where it's adding the value? I mean, how else would how else would someone get paid from abroad? No, there's no, now you can't. What do you mean you can't? Sure, you. No, you not can't. at all. Not at all. What I do mean, you, What do you mean not at all? We have to to well now it's we have a new president now it's things are changing like in a couple of days we have a new president yeah. and we have two different exchange rates. I mean, like the official exchange rate, which is almost ten pesos per dollar. And we have the market exchange rate, which is 15 pesos per dollar. Oh, wow. So if you want to buy US dollars, you need to pay 15 pesos. So if you get a wire transfer from abroad, the bank instantly exchanges those US dollars for 10 pesos for $1. Oh, so that awful nobody wants, them. <laughs> yeah, so nobody wants to, to receive a wire transfer from abroad. So if you go through any type of third-party <clears throat> intermediary... Uh, the financial institution, they're always going to give you this bad, this horrible exchange rate yes. of 10 instead of 15. Exactly. So you, I guess you can get paid from abroad, but you're just not going to get paid very much. Exactly. <laughs> well, we have this problem with, with, uh, with exportations. Uh, exportations? Okay. Exports? Yeah, exporting, exporting. Uh, goods or well, like cattle or, yeah, or soybeans or yes, something. Soy, soybeans, yeah. Well, when you export, you, you have to get paid through a bank. So the, the, the import exporters, they want to the receive export, Bitcoin. The exporters don't want to, to, to sell their, their goods, uh, because they get paid with the future exchange rate. But things are changing now and we are, you know, again, trying to be a normal place to, to <laughs> commerce. Yeah. You got good steak. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, in most of the, I mean, Europe has, 10 times the volume of Bitcoin transactions than Latin America, of course, the States is always leading the, the, the way. And you don't have capital controls. Oh, and yeah, we do. I've, if we try to take $5 of pennies or nickels across a border, you can go to jail for five years. Really? Yeah, just coins, you know, the change. Why? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, maybe. <laughs> the, the pennies and nickels, actually, if you, if you melt them down, one of the pennies might be worth 2.2 pennies. Yeah, probably. And yeah. so... The I guess the reasoning is that 
even though you own the penny, you don't have the right to melt it down and get the, the, the actual yeah. the copper commodity value out of the penny. And so, yeah, I mean, that's a hard currency control in the United States. You try to either melt or export only $5. Like, that's okay, pocket change. Yeah. But, but, yeah, I mean, that's a currency control. We also have uh, uh, limits on, like, wire transfer amounts and stuff like that that can come into play. So we're not that bad. <laughs> you should come to Argentina. <laughs> I do. I, I, I've been. I've actually been down to Argentina a lot since uh, 2007, and began going down in 2011 to build Bitcoin specifically in Argentina. So yeah, I mean, I'm very interested in how Bitcoin applies to to Latin America. Anyway, you can send a wire transfer abroad, I mean, or you can receive a money tra a wire transfer if you are exporting some goods. But you get a horrible use. exchange rate. Yeah, and in Europe. It's the same. I mean, you can send money abroad. There's no problems with the exchange rate. There's only one exchange rate. Nevertheless, those countries use this Bitcoin much more than we do. So I believe it has to, to do with uh, financial freedom and the possibility to be to hold your own money. And before Bitcoin, if you wanted to hold your money, you, you needed to have a, a suitcase full of US dollars for gold. <laughs> Uh, below your bed or something like that because if you have it if you want to have your money virtually you need a bank now you don't now you can have your money virtually without any risk or any apparent risk in the cloud in this amazing right. blockchain that well it's it's uh, it's amazing so you know looking at bitcoin as a good or service that we hire to do a particular job i mean is that the highest the the reason you hire bitcoin I mean, like, why, why do you want to own it? Why do you want to hire it? It's to, to have that control over the money? Is it to get, you know, to not be as susceptible to the currency control? I mean, what, what is it that really drives you? Well, it's the financial freedom. It's the possibility to send and receive money without anyone looking at you or spying at you. You are in control of your own money. The thing with Bitcoin right now is that the volatility makes it a horrible store of value. Better than the peso. Yeah, well, probably. <laughs> well, anything is much better than the peso. Not the Venezuelan Bolivar. <clears throat> no, that's amazing. <laughs> they are they are really having a bad time there. But yes, I mean, if we achieve like volatility stability with a Bitcoin price, that well, many people think that Wall Street to take care of that with the future contracts and stuff, it would be an amazing store of value. And if you have a stable price, stabilized price, and you can send and receive money in just one minute without any cost to anyone anywhere around the world, well, it's the best form of money we have ever invented. It's much better than gold. It's much better than, uh, well, Warren Buffett said that if someone from Mars came here and he sees that We dig to take the, all the gold that we can, and then we melt it, and then we put it underground <laughs> again. But with, you know, with custody, with people with guns, it's just crazy. It's like, why? How is it that this has, has value? Why? Why you dig, and then you take the whole, all the gold you can, and then you, you, you save it again, you store it again. So to understand Bitcoin, you need to understand a lot about economics and how, how, how we work as a, as a race, you know, the human race. Well, why, why do we value <clears throat> Bitcoin? Like, why do, why do you think it actually is worth anything? Because it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, well, crazy is why the U.S. dollar, they are printing, you're printing so much, <laughs> you know. Well, the, the truth is that it's the best form of money we have ever invented. It's, it has all the characteristics of, of money. I mean, fungibility, divisibility, uh, scarce, scarcity. Yes. Uh, transferability, portability. Well, it's it's much. You can transfer Bitcoin much easier than, of course, gold and well and uh, pesos and pesos for sure. Course. Yeah, and people don't understand that when you because maybe you can transfer pesos or US dollar with the bank, but you are not in control of your money and you don't hold US dollars. I mean, US dollars are a piece of paper. If you have US dollars in your bank account, you have debt. The bank is owing you US dollars. If you Hold US dollars, you need to have the note, the bill with the Franklin, with the face of Benjamin Franklin. Have you been taught that lesson in Argentina? I mean, do the banks, do they just not give you your money? Is that, is that why that's such an important point for you? Well, 
you know, when you, you grow up in Argentina, you, you, you learn uh, some things that if you were born in Austria or, I know, Belgium, you just don't realize. Every time I talk with someone from other country, I, 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 I tell them that we are used to volatility. We are used to knowing how to be, how to avoid volatility because we're used to, I mean, it's, a cultural thing. We are the country that owns the most amount of US dollars. 300 billion Argentines have, have 300 million dollars abroad. Not in our country, but in <laughs> another country. That's crazy. Why? Well, if you see one peso from 1970, it's like, it's worth like, I don't know, 100 million pesos from today because we had to, to take zeros out of the, <laughs> of the, of the current, of our currency. We have a history of devaluation and inflation. In 1989, we had 100% inflation a month. So we're used to deal with, with this. That's why Bitcoin for us is like, it feels like home. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. So, but well, we know how to, how to avoid those things that if you, you were born in a first world country where things work the way they should work properly, just, you know, oh, wow, wait, wait, what is this? Wow, this is so volatile. I cannot trust this. Do, do you have a, like a specific example of, you know, besides like the, the wire coming in where you only get 10 pesos instead of 15? Do you have a specific example where it just doesn't work the way it should in Argentina and where Bitcoin is helping make it work? Well, the copies and gold draws is like very obvious. Um, well, we have 25% inflation a year, so <laughs> prices just go up in our lo in our currency. So that's another use case. Well, of course, if you compare the volatility, so it's the same, or maybe you end up winning or not, it doesn't matter, but our currency loses value every day. And you can add the capital control situation and you have like a, a really amazing cocktail for Bitcoin to to flourish in our country. Uh, the thing with Bitcoin is that you still need to understand how it works, and it's very difficult. It takes lots of uh, knowledge uh, around computers, computer science, maybe cryptography. If you want to understand how it works, I believe that in the future we won't need to understand how it works the way that nobody understands how electricity works, and it just works. And nobody cares how it works. I was telling the guys there that there was a survey in Indonesia asking that you use Facebook. 75% of the people said yes. And then they, they asked them, uh, do you use the internet? And only 50% said yes. So they don't even know they're using TCP IP. Nobody cares. They just use it. It's easy to use. They use it. I think that we are still far away from that with Bitcoin. But we are all building that. That's why we are here in the conference. We, we're going to have to 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 make it easier for people to use it. Or maybe they won't even know they're using it. I mean, maybe banks will use it to settle the balance between them instead of saying a wire transfer with, with special cables uh, <laughs> below the ocean that they threw 50 years ago. It's crazy if you think about that, like... People that say that Bitcoin is not going to, to work in the world, I mean, it's not going to, to be a currency or store of value, everything. Well, you know, 30 years ago, someone thought that in order to transfer money from country, from one country to another, they needed to, to build this amazing infrastructure, special infrastructure between banks, you know, the SWIFT, with cables that go below the ocean. And if you think about that, it's crazy that it's working right now, actually. It, it, it's actually working. And it's much more difficult to do that than to do this with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is much easier. It's open source. Everyone around the world is collaborating with each other. Of course, we have the internet now, so we can communicate with each other. Very exciting. What are you working on specifically, or what types of projects would you like to work on with some other countries, or, not, or some other companies in other countries? We are trying to build this, the open source Swift we we are trying to develop we do that with Volavit already with Connect but we are trying to build a unique API a library an online library for companies to say okay I want to participate I just download this I 
integrated into my website and I'm part of the network. And if someone wants to send money from my company to this company in Argentina, I can do it very easily. It's very difficult because, you know, when you talk to companies, everyone is doing what they want to do at this moment. So no one is is going to left everything they are doing just to integrate this new feature in the platform. But, well, it's a, it's a, it's a nice challenge. And I think it's the future of, of one of the, of the, the uses of Bitcoin. Uh, a simple way to transfer fiat currency between companies around the world instead of transferring debt from one bank to another. And then when you want to withdraw your money, then you have the Cyprus crisis and no one can withdraw anything because the money is just not there. So they inflate it. It's just not there. They don't give it to you. Argentina, you guys have you've experienced it all, haven't yeah. you? We've been in hell and back. <laughs> a couple of times. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, well, we have a crisis every eight or ten years. Yeah. And Bitcoin just feels like home. It feels like the solution to just this monetary chaos that you guys have had. Well, I, it's it's not a permanent solution. It's part of the solution. But when you realize that the problem is not that we don't understand how money works, it's that we do understand how it works and we do it wrong. Not me, but, you know, the government or the past governments... They, 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 of course, they know that if you print money, you get inflation. Only you guys can do that, that you don't get inflation. Not forever. It, no, not forever. <laughs> of course, and everyone uh, wants your money. So that's the difference. But of course, we know that. It's not that Bitcoin is, is, is coming to save us from, from these crazy monetary theories. No, we know what, what's happening. We do it anyway. But for sure, an open source form of money will allow people to, to choose like the internet. I mean, we have, in my country, we, we are still debating about the, the role of the media and stuff. We have a, before an election, any election, two days before any election, no one can talk about anything relating to the election on the TV or the radio. The candidates cannot talk about the presidential election or anything. But then when you go to the internet, you see everything. So we have... All laws for 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 you know all regulation for things that are you know we just don't care. Okay, you can talk on television about the presidential election, but you can tweet about it, and so and you can say numbers during the election on television until the the, the places where you vote are closed. You cannot say who's winning or anything, but you can tweet about it. So it's the same with Bitcoin. I mean, we still have laws that doesn't apply with the current situation. I find that incredibly interesting. You actually have to vote in Argentina, yeah, right? It's like it's, got, yeah, it's, it's illegal. Mandatory. It's mandatory if you don't yes. vote. And yet they have currency controls, so you can't vote with your money. Hmm. No, you can't. It's incredibly ironic. Yes. Um, anyways, we've had a, a tremendous podcast interview with Matias Bari. He's the CEO and co-founder of Satoshi Tango. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Trace, for your time. Thank you very much. Be sure to get a copy of the free Bitcoin guide at freebitcoinguide.com. Got a question or suggestion? Record your voice at bitcoin.kn. Don't be shy. To help the show, share bitcoin.kn with friends, post about it on Reddit, and otherwise spam the interwebs. Your iTunes comments and five-star reviews are very important to us. Please continue tuning in to the Bitcoin Knowledge Podcast, where we release interviews with the top people in the Bitcoin world. Now take some choline and let that Bitcoin knowledge consolidate. Consolidate.